Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. Hope you're all doing good today. So we are gonna be turning up a gear shift knob. I am super excited about this. So I got the, the blank demolded and we'll go to this view. Here it is. I'm gonna actually get a little bit of, uh, I guess all I have is acetone, but something a little bit kind of wet. To, no, that's just, unfortunately acetone dries so fast that it's kind of useless for doing what I was trying to do. We're gonna get some alcohol. It doesn't dry as fast try this so if you missed uh, Wednesday's stream we cast this blank and it's got a little bit of interference blue in there and you can see that the outside looks cloudy um, but I don't really think that that is going to be I think it's just on the outside of the the rim there so I think that we're pretty good um, we got some some clear on the top um, it's kind of interesting how this blank turned out the white kind of almost there's like a little bubble hump in the middle so hard to see on this angle but I think it'll I think it'll work pretty good I think it's gonna I think it turned out okay kind of what I was going for now one thing that I actually thought of um, just today it probably would have been smarter to go with black uh, instead of white on the bottom um, I did that for kind of a, a particular reason, but um, black would have been pretty cool as a background for the interference powder. So next time, if I'm doing little swirls of interference, the darker background is probably going to make it pop even more. So anyway, pretty cool stuff. We're going to go get that chucked up on the lathe. Now, the way that this thing works, I got this mandrel from uh, Stainless Bottle Stoppers and they have a couple different types i guess uh, but basically the way that this hardware works um, and this is not a stainless bottle stopper product it's called american shifter i think is the company i don't i can't show you an example of what's actually in the blank because i don't have another one <laughs> but um, you basically buy a universal oh shoot i was gonna show you guys something else. I wonder if I can do that really quick. I have a video that I can show you guys, I think. Hold on. Um, I can, I, I was, I, I made a, <laughs> I really want to show you this because um, I spent the time making video and I was like, oh, I can shoot video, but I got to get it on my computer real quick. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, I think, I think I can do this. Maybe. Just have to see. Um, anyway, so in the bottom of this is kind of like a universal um, doohickey, let's call it, um, little like kind of nut thing. And then what you do, you have to buy that. This is kind of expensive doing it this way. I, I don't know of any other good way to do it. I mean, I, you could maybe just tap threads into the blank. I don't think I would do that because the blank's probably going to expand and contract a little bit um, in the summer and winter months and. I think you're better off going with some sort of a, an insert. Um, but then you can buy a kit that adapts to, uh, they have a couple different ones. They have a standard, you know, like your, your half inch, inch, whatever, um, standard sizes, plus they also have a metric sizes one. The problem is you can't just buy, you know, let, let's say that you have, you know, a quarter 28 thread, you can't just buy that one. You have to buy the whole pack, which, Kind of sucks it's kind of expensive but once you have your um your size once you have that you basically just put that on your shifter and then you just use these universals um so basically all these different sizes have a different have the same outside thread and then the inside is what you screw down onto the um the gear shift knob basically all right so that's how that works i linked to the hardware down below and i also linked to the the mandrel so this mandrel fits the universal um, and you can't use your universal mandrel from stainless bottle stoppers it's not the right thread um, but you got that so and there's other ways you can do it too but i mean if you're going to have to put an insert in there anyway you may as well just spend the money on this mandrel if you're going to make a few of these things so let's see if i can get this video Oh, I don't know if it'll work. Of course. I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can get this video to work. Um, I need to try.
Oh, maybe. Not seeming to work. Wouldn't it work? Try this. Oh, it's not working. Okay, well that totally didn't work. I was going to show you, so what I did on this thing was I, I ended up, the blank was a little bit longer and I cut off some of the white uh, on the bottom. I kind of figured out what size I need and I'm gonna go for about two and a half inch and then um, try to, basically what I'm gonna do is go for kind of just a round knob, so almost like a, a sphere type blank. Um, so two and a half and I'm actually thinking that the majority of the, the um, insert that I glued in there I think that the majority of that's going to be covered up by the white. I think I did an okay job. There is a little window, um, but what I did to kind of combat that was, let's see, is there no, there's no screen. <laughs> anyway, um, I turned this back, um, you know, like parted off some of the bottom of the blank, the white. Um, and then, like I said, two and a half inches is what I'm going for, going for a round kind of thing. And then, um, what was I going to say? Oh, and then I, I added a little bit of white dye to the, the epoxy that I glued the insert in with. And that way that'll hopefully kind of mask or cover up the, the, you know, seeing the actual insert. But I think the majority of that white resin, there's like this, what I could see, there was just a tiny little window where it might kind of pop through. So we'll have to see once we get it done turning. Yeah, I know you couldn't see me. I don't know what the deal is. This, I'm, I'm, I couldn't pull up the, the window the problem so i'm thinking about switching the the um live streaming software that i use because i use obs studio and it's free and that's wonderful but it's like super complicated and so if you try to do anything that falls outside of what you normally do and know how to <laughs> and have already set you know fifty thousand settings for then like you can't do things on the fly very easily and so i'm looking into maybe getting a different um thing i also have a mac computer that i have i bought months ago and still haven't set up because i don't it's kind of tough to to go into all the setup uh for another you know streaming thing like obs doesn't really work that well on on win, uh, on mac computers it, it does it's okay but you can run into even more problems and it's already complicated so anyway i don't know what to do but anyway all right so let's switch over to the lathe Let's get this thing turning, huh? I'm already tired of hearing myself talk. All right, so this just screws onto the lathe. Oh, you know what it is? So they have a couple different mandrels. I'm guessing I didn't really look um, at what they were. I'm, I'm thinking that this is, they probably have a one inch eight TPI and then a one and a quarter eight. That's probably why there's two of them because you're going to be using the same threads on all of them. Let me get my phone fired up here. There we go. Turn the volume down. Okay, so I can see the chat. Mm, let's see here. I think up, down. Okay, so we're all ready to go here. So again, I'm going for a sphere shape, and that one's kind of tough to turn sometimes, like the, 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 the shaping of it. I don't care if it's perfect. I'm not going to pull out like a sphere jig or anything like that. But um, sometimes that shape is like really, I don't know, for me, it's, it's hard to turn, you know, <laughs> sometimes. So I might kind of take a little bit of, take my time a little bit, you know, and uh, I'm going to try something also today. What should I use? Maybe like just cardboard. So I don't really want to mar up the front of this thing too much. So I think I might put a like something rubber or something like that. I've seen people put 
random things in between their tailstock support and the I don't know what to use though. Anybody got any suggestions? Something that might be laying around in the shop? Hmm. I got a silicone mat. That wouldn't be too bad. I have to cut it up though. Let's just go with, I have a rubber Chucky thing. Let's just try that out. I got this like rubber thing that, we'll see if this works. Too. I don't think I need a whole lot of support, but you know, it's never a bad idea to add a little bit of tailstock support. Kind of squishes it up there, makes sure everything doesn't move. Okay, and let's see, do I have my that going, got that going. Get the dust collector set up here real quick. I'll tell you what guys, a, really, a tool that, that I really, really enjoy having is the, uh, the Easy Wood Tools parting tool, They're the new one. So I had, they, they came out with an, like the original model, I really didn't like that thing. It just like the, the bit kind of came out and it just wasn't awesome. They changed the design and this thing is just awesome for parting away, especially parting away uh, resin. So if you're in the market for a parting tool, that's a good one. Um, I'm really happy with it and you don't have to sharpen it obviously. So it makes it quite nice. I find that I'm sharpening parting tools more often than I'm using them. Yeah, round is kind of a weird one. I don't know. <laughs> just, like, because when I do spheres, I, I try to get it with the tool as close as possible, then use the, the, the sphere jig. And I've done them, like, pretty much just with the tool. And I'm, it's just hit or miss for me sometimes, especially if you haven't done one for a while. So my game plan for this <clears throat> is you know the ends of the sphere need to come off so you can almost kind of think about like taking a 45 almost on, on the corners and take off a lot of stuff but you want to make sure that you're keeping the center of the blank you know is going to be kind of still fat so it just it's kind of it's kind of a weird thing sometimes you know one thing that you can do also if you uh that can kind of help Let's see if I have, I'm not, I don't have one set up. You can kind of use a, like a guide. Yeah. So if you have like a circle template, you know, you, if you have something that, where you cut out like two and a half inches, it, it can kind of help to, to just put, you know, some sort of a circle over top of the blanks so that you can kind of see what, what do I need to really cut off of this thing. Let me, let me do it like this because it will probably end up being like two and a quarter. But you can kind of hold it over it and that will kind of help you see ahead of time, like, you know, what, where do the cuts need to be made, I guess. Um, and another way that you can do this, I got cords everywhere that are not working with me. Um, I'm going to see if I can try and get the camera view of, uh, over this thing. Let's see if, I don't know if this is going to work so well, but so two, I'm going to just use like the two and a quarter. So if you just kind of hold this over your blank, you can kind of see, you know, where do I need, what, what material still needs to come off of this thing. So every once in a while you can kind of stop and, you know, kind of take a peek at that, that template and just kind of, you know, see what's going on. Now another way that I've done it in the past, I'm just going to set the camera up here, hold on. Another way that I've done it in the past is because I use a lot of like four inch. I've just got like a half a half a PVC pipe, 
and then I can just kind of hold it over there and like kind of look and see okay I got more to take off on these corners or you know whatever so just just something to kind of think about that might might be helpful kind of helps me out sometimes first things first let's get this thing kind of trued up So again, I don't really think, right now you can kind of see a bunch of white on the outside. We might have a little bit of that kind of in the middle, but I think we're gonna turn away a lot of that. <clears throat> my, my plan to, I don't know if you saw the pour, um, I, I, I kind of held the, the pipe on its side and uh, was just trying to kind of like ease the, the clear on top of the white and it, the problem was the dye just kind of moved around. So if you really wanted to have just a flat you know, white, just do a, a two pour, two, you know, two pours, pour the white, let it kind of set up, and then same day, demold it, as long as you're using Alumalite clear, um, demold it, and then pour your clear on top of that, you know. And I'm not, I don't care if this thing turns out like perfectly spherical. That's not, but I, it, it needs to have a, a sphere-ish shape. Um, I had a, the last one that I did, I just, I, it, it really was uncomfortable in my hand because I didn't do a very good job of turning that shape. So it was kind of, kind of sharp and pointed almost like an egg. And after a year of shifting with that thing, I, <laughs> No thanks. You guys see what's going on? Okay. Good. So far, so good. There's a lot of material that needs to be taken off on this thing. The blank was three inches, so I really do need to even come down in the diameter. You know, a good, you know, at least, I mean, minimum half inch. The blank's two and a half tall, so, but it's going to probably end up being just a little bit short of, well, I don't know. Probably like more like two and a quarter. And actually, one the, the side that I I do pretty good at kind of chasing that that kind of sphere shape on the right side. You know, when I, whenever I do spheres, this side's always like pretty good, and then this inside side is like terrible. It's like this. I don't know. I don't know why that is. I gotta get this thing up closer. 
I'm smelling shavings, which means that I'm breathing them. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> That's why. Okay. So what's everybody working on in your shop this weekend? And another thing about this, luckily, I actually don't really care so much if this side is like, like a ball, like a sphere. Um, it's mainly I need the top, which is which works in my favor since I'm usually better at, you know, the right hand side. This could be kind of just angled down a little bit, which is what I tend to do. So this is actually a really good project for me because it like plays to my strengths. Having to work? No. Oh, you're making pen blanks with PVC pipes. Nice. Um, I've, I've continued my my escapades as well. Um, learning, learning things. You know, like when you're trying to like learn a new technique or hone something in. You know, a skill. Unfortunately, the only way to do it is to do it over and over and until you kind of make some uh, ones so that you kind of get used to the process, you know, like the muscles. Um, but the other thing is you also kind of need to, you know, see what triggers what outcome a lot of times. And so, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, depending on whatever they're trying to do they're like oh I this isn't working and I'm like well how many times have you tried it you know <laughs> they're like I did it once and I'm like well okay do it do it a hundred more times and you'll you'll get it down usually you don't have to do it that many times but you know just an example So it's looking pretty decent. I mean, it's round. It's definitely rounder than it was on my first try. Still pretty big though. And again, I'm not particularly worried about the specs. It doesn't need to be two and, you know, three eighths inches diameter and all these things. I just, it needs to be comfortable in my hand. That's, that's kind of the, 
only criteria. It's a little bit fat right now, so. Definitely take off a little bit more of this middle. But I think I'm better off leaving the, the middle fat and then taking some off. And doing it the other way. And one thing that I was going to try to do, this was my plan originally. I was looking at the, the original or the, the, you know, factory gear shift knob. And I don't know if you can see if, if I can get, uh, I don't know if you can see down in there, but realistically the, the nut doesn't actually start until like, like there, the threads. Which means that this thing kind of comes, you know, down around the, the gear shift stick further. So I was actually going to try to, like, mimic that. But I realized that that wouldn't really work with this mandrel, number one. Which me or that, you know, that's not... There's other ways to do this, I guess. But, um, so that was one problem. And then the other issue is there's a nut. And you wouldn't really be able to tighten that. But I've also... Regarding the nut, I've actually decided just to toss that out because it just, it adds a quarter inch or so, maybe even up to a half, depending on how thick your nut is. And it's supposed to lock it down. Well, I've had the nut on my, on mine for a year and it didn't lock anything down. It didn't really work. And the problem also is it, it, it raised the, the knob up half an inch and it actually made that the throw longer and I got a cup holder right be, right behind my the you know like the gear gear shift in the manual and every time I'd go into like sixth gear or fourth gear which are both down it would like smack the cups which meant it was too long so I'm just going without the nut and we're gonna try that for a year and see how it goes I drive at Tacoma. Ah, oh, you're out of resin. Packing for their moves. I know the shavings are so fun. Oh, is it hot over there too? Uh. It hasn't been super terrible here. Stefan, how's it going? Oh, well, thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it.
So if you can kind of get the sphere shape started, you know, obviously I got a flat on the top, but if you can kind of get this thing going off the bat, then really all you need to do is just take even passes, you know, as, as, about as even as you can get and just whittle it down until you, you know, come into that flat top. So it's not that difficult to get the spherical shape. It just, you know, sometimes it feels like you're chasing this thing and it's all oblong and egg shaped and you're just like, what is going on? Some days are just better than others. So I'm pretty happy right now with how this is going. I am kind of making the bottom kind of shift in, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of abandoning the, the sphere. I'm kind of doing this on purpose. But I think I'm probably going to be about done with this thing on the bottom pretty soon. I don't know, we'll have to kind of see, but... Probably going to stop and kind of get my hand in this thing and kind of feel how it is. It still looks like it's pretty big. Let's just do this right now. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. Like, I'm not driving a Mack truck. So we're going we're gonna to make this thing come down a little bit. That's, that's a little bit too much, I think. It doesn't need to be huge. It just needs to be round for me. <clears throat> and so, you know... I didn't really have a problem with the original one, which is pretty small, you know. That was fine. So we're, we're, we still got a bit of material to take off. Yeah, the dust collector, that was uh, one of my happiest purchases. It really works well, it does a lot to just knock down. you know, the amount of dust that's in the shop in the air. Uh, but it costs a pretty pre pretty penny. And I, the thing is, you know, look, like looking back, I don't know that it was a good purchase for me. I don't know. It was a lot of money. I really like it. It works great. It's one of those tools that it hurt, you know, at first, but it was so expensive because I, I got the Oneida. Uh, dust gorilla and I I don't know honestly I probably could have just uh, the other alternative that I was looking at was the Laguna um, and I, I don't know it would have been so much cheaper to go that route but um, half of the half of the cost actually more than half of the cost so the dust collector cost 5,000 and the ductwork cost more than that <laughs> okay that's really where the um, that's really what hurt but I ended up going with the I forget what they call it the Nordfab stuff that just kind of clicks together and it sure did make installation extremely easy so I, I don't know you know but it cost a lot of money that I didn't need to spend on that probably but it works, you know, it's one of the, I'm in the, I'm still in the middle. Like, I don't know that I have buyer's remorse totally because it just works perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, but I'll tell you, you don't, you definitely don't need to spend that much money on a dust collector to get good dust collection.
All right, still looking pretty good. Still looking decent. Uh, yeah, somewhere, because we're probably, we're at about a billiard ball right now, so I could probably even go a little bit smaller than that. Let's see what diameter we're at. Um, the middle's a little bit kind of fat right now, so let me... So let's see what, what kind of diameter we're looking at here. The blank was three inches, so it's less than that. So we're somewhere around two and two and a half. That's kind of what I was going for, but I think we're gonna probably bring it down. The, the middle's a little bit fat right now. So I might, I might take it down just a little bit more, especially in the middle. Kind of get this, it's starting to be a little eggy, sort of. I guess the middle's not that bad, but probably come come in you know we're, we're, we're getting pretty close because I mean on, I, that's the diameter so on each side so like I only need to take off about an eighth inch or so from the from the center of this thing and you can do that if you're if you're really going for a specific number then I would just part in you know if I wanted two and an eighth find the center of the blank part in to two and an eighth and then just sweep it back you know with your cuts but like I said I'm, I'm not it's not that important I, I want to just stop and feel how it feels in my hand because I may end up going smaller than that even this tailstock out of the way start trying to work on this get this to end man I think this thing's gonna look oh yeah this is gonna look sweet so we do have a little bit of that kind of wisp I don't know if you guys can see this let's let's get you guys in here I think this thing's gonna be pretty cool I was I was like oh, I don't know when I was pouring it and I think a lot of people were like okay I don't know this isn't that exciting I do think it's actually going to be pretty cool. Let me get my camera fixed here. And then I'm going to I'm going to hit it with a little bit of denatured alcohol. Uh, I need to get a paper towel though. Real quick.
I didn't do a very great job with uh, injecting this stuff. I would have rather had it kind of a little bit more in the middle, but it kind of dries really quick. But you guys get the picture. It's kind of cool looking. It'll be really interesting to see what that resin, the white, did because it kind of feathered up a little bit, which is, again, you know, I was kind of going for something specific, sort of, like layers was the idea with that pour. And I think I'm going to learn a couple things like, oh, well, you can kind of get, you know, it may not be like super repeatable every time, but, you know, you, if you wanted to get like a feathered look, that may be the way to do it, you know. Who knows? Who even knows these days? <clears throat> All right, CJ, have a good one. Handball, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I think we kind of put some, maybe we sort of put glow powder on, on the top of the burl. Sort of, but it, it didn't actually really work out. It's a little bit fat right there. Kind of just coming in a little bit flat on the top there. This is where things go kind of sideways with the, the sphere. <laughs> Trying to like hone it in at that that you know to the last final kind of shaping. You, uh, I find that I, I kind of have to go back and forth and kind of mess around with stuff a little bit. Look at it from different angles as well. You know, obviously you kind of want to be looking at that top side, but... Looking pretty good. Pretty happy with my. Be happy with my sphere skill today. Looks like this is a little high right there. Okay, let's stop it and yeah, that's not too bad. Still maybe a little bit bigger than I want. I don't know. I don't know. If... So here, here's the deal, guys. I would much rather start out 
trying it lar larger than I think it might, I, than, I, than I might want it, because <laughs> I can always take more off. And it's just a matter of, you know, taking it off the gear shift knob in the truck and putting it back on the lathe. So I, you know, I don't, I don't think I want to go too much thinner right now on this, but I do want to, I, I kind of like the shape of this. I could come in a little bit more, but I think I'm going to leave it that way. Still, still, I'm just having a little bit of trouble getting this thing kind of around the horn, right, right in there. Feels like. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. pretty flat on the top there. Let me try and like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not not really after the perfect sphere on this thing. I just want it to not have weird kind of flat areas. And this might be good. Yeah. That feels pretty good in the hand, guys. <laughs> I call it the 80 grit smoother. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to need to do that today, though. Maybe well, maybe like 240. Start, start sanding at 240 and see how that goes. It's definitely not like super smooth, but... It's not too bad either, really. So I think I think we're ready to start sanding. Let's do this. What do you guys think about that thing? I'm gonna get you guys down kind of at a lower angle, kind of straight on with it. Can't see the thing. Turn my light down a little bit. Maybe that'll. Add a little bit more contrast. I don't know. I can't tell if you can see anything from this. I think it might just be super bright. Let's uh, let's try and hit it with some denatured alcohol real quick to see if you guys can see from there. Yeah, this thing's gonna be pretty cool looking, I think. It's not the most flashy thing I've ever made, you know, but I do think that just a little bit of um, interference powder is going to, it's its like subtle. Subtlety sometimes can be more powerful than, you know, going all out with some something. Man. All right, I gotta take, there we go, okay. I was trying to do manual camera mode. <laughs> so it's not bad, it's not a perfect sphere, but it's pretty close. I don't know. I'm certainly not complaining about it. It's better than some of my attempts that I was actually going for a sphere. Okay, 
So like I said, I'm gonna see what 240 grit, how that does. Um, if I need to, I can drop down to 180. Um, if the 240 is not really getting the, the tool marks out. And on this one, all I'm doing is we're just gonna polish it up. Actually, I have the reverse. I can reverse this, the direction on my lathe, and I find that to be a lot easier for me to just come, come in from the top. Now, one thing I also found on my other shifter was I had a pretty sharp edge on the bottom, and that thing was a little bit smaller. That's another reason why I wanted something bigger, but my fingers would grab that thing, and it just didn't feel very good. So I'm going to kind of come in here and sand off that lip a little bit just to break the, that sharper edge so it's not a pain in the hand. kind of like a light bulb. I have a moon. What vacuum setup am I using? Uh, this is just a mandrel, if that's what you mean. It's not a, not a vacuum chuck. I don't think I would, I don't know, I, I, I don't know enough that much about it, but I mean, you really wouldn't want to turn something like this without support with just vacuum, I don't think. That's probably pretty good. Let me stop and look at this. Yeah, I don't see any tool marks. Just gonna do a little bit of kind of hand. Hit this by hand on the end. Sometimes, because that's not really spinning as fast as the, like the outside. Sometimes it's kind of nice to just give it a little extra on the top there. Okay, move up to 400 grit. I'm gonna need to bust out a new Abernet roll on 400 soon. I don't even know where my... I don't even know where the roll went. Where'd it go? Thought I had more of it. Hmm. Okay, I guess we're busting out a new one right now. Cause I can't even find the old one. How exciting. It takes a while to go through these rolls. So I just use these, these Abernet rolls. Um, but you can also get Abernet. You don't need to buy it by the roll. If you don't need that much. Uh, Turner's Warehouse carries Abernet. Packs. Um, but I do have links to the, the rolls that I get on my website. And there's a link to that down below in the description if you want to check out the tools I use page. It's 
got all the stuff I use for the most part. All right, denatured alcohol. Just wipe that off. Make sure we don't have any grit particles or dust. It's always a good thing to do in between each grit is just to wipe it off a little bit. Some denatured alcohol. Let's see, I was talking like your vacuum here. Oh, the dust collector? Well, I, I have a, like I said, I have a, like an industrial dust collection system, so it doesn't get clogged. Um, it's an Oneida dust gorilla. And four, four inch drops, and then five or six inch pipe ductwork. But it doesn't really get clogged. Two and a half inch, you know, like if you're just using a shop vac, that that's gonna clog up like a lot. But you're as long as you have like a dust collector with like a four inch hose, you should be fine. It's usually not that bad at clogging. So we're gonna do 200, uh, 240, 400, and then we'll move over to the zone of polishing papers. Do a couple grits of that, and then we'll go, I'm, I'm gonna go for magic juice on this and see how that works. It's a little bit big. I, I like using magic juice for pens usually. Um, but I wanted to kinda, I don't know if I've done that on like a stopper yet. This is about stopper size, you know. We'll give the old magic juice a shot. I think that's probably pretty good. Let's get this top part again. Oh. <clears throat> and then we can thankfully turn off the dust collector and do some wet sanding. Yay! You can start wet sanding at any any grit. I just kind of, for some reason, I do it this way, dry. It's easier to kind of wipe off and, and be able to see in between grits, I find. That's why I do that. But you can, you can wet sand from start to finish and not have to run a dust collector or anything. All right, so wipe that off. This thing down. All right. Got a cup of water here. We got our zona papers. This one's about 750 grit or so. This thing out of the way. Um, and Turner's Warehouse also carries the Zona paper packs. I typically only use the first two and then move to a polishing compound of some sort. Either back in the, you know, I used to use buffing wheels, but uh, Magic Juice, something. Um, but, you know, a lot of people really like just going all the way up with the Zona paper. Um, it works. I don't, for some reason, I don't get as good a results doing that. 
So I usually just get it up to, you know, uh, this is 750. I do the gray sometimes. I might do the blue today just to get it even higher, but for the most part, as long as you can get, you know, the, the, the resin sanded up to about 2000 grit, somewhere between 1000 and 2000, then, uh, you know, buffing wheels or polishing compounds or, you know, whatever, whatever you use to get to that final gloss should be good to go. Shouldn't be too hard to do that. Now, again, for anybody that didn't really catch the, the casting part of this, so we're, we're kind of continuing an experiment. Um, we're we're going to compare this to Amazing Clear Cast. So this was made with Alumilite Clear Slow, uh, which really doesn't have any UV inhibitors in it at all. Um, if it does, it's like super minimal. So it tends to yellow faster than you know, some of the other resins out there that have UV inhibitors in them. And the Amazing Clear Cast Plus, that product has pretty good, you know, according to Alumilite, like high UV in inhibition. And so I, I already made one gear shift knob with that um, and did kind of a hybrid burl and clear and had it in my truck for a year. And I mean, it really hasn't yellowed. I mean, it's it's still looking, I, I can't see yellowing, like like typical yellowing, like I would think of. And my truck sits outside all day long, getting blasted by sun. So um, I would say that, that stuff worked pretty well. So the next experiment, and you know, it's not like we're gonna necessarily know unless the stuff yellows right away. Um, I'm gonna give this about a year, and then I wanna come back and kind of compare. Now, I kind of wish I would have made a bigger, <laughs> you know, like this, a better knob on the first one. But either way, I mean, if, if there's clear resin, you know, I, I think it's it would look, it, it's going to yellow if it's going to yellow, regardless of how much it is. So, that's the experiment. Uh, but I'll tell you what, after a year of using that other gear shift knob that I didn't turn particularly well, I'm really looking forward to this one. <laughs> a lot better. One of the one of the problems with that other one is I think, uh, like I think I actually didn't. I, I think I didn't start with a big enough blank. Basically, I think I might have started with like a one and three quarter inch or so blank, and so there just really wasn't enough um, material to to make something like this. It definitely wasn't this big. Um, biggest it could have been was two inches, basically. But I actually think it might have even been, I, I'm not sure exactly which mold, I could look it up, but I'm not entirely certain which mold I actually used, but it was, you know, two inches or smaller. And so I think for these gear shift knobs, you know, I think you're much better off if you're gonna cast it in PVC. I think you really wanna start probably with a three inch. Um, it just gives you, you know, a lot more room even if you start with a two inch blank, you know, just truing it up, you're gonna drop at least probably about an eighth inch. So just kind of depends on what you're going for. But I think that three inch, I think, I don't look at this stuff that much. I haven't noticed that much, but I think that most of the people that are like making these things kind of as their kind of focus, they do a lot of them. I'm pretty sure they start with a larger blank, typically like a three inch, you know. Nick is in the house. What's up, man? Using magic juice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, the magic juice stuff, I'm telling you, it's it's pretty good stuff. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised. You know, there, there's a million ways to, to polish up resin. You know, it's not the only way, but you know, for me, the way that I always kind of look at these types of things is you got to pick a pick whichever method is easiest for you to get good results, you know. 
I mean, everybody can get good results with every, you know, somebody can get good results doing it any kind of way. But I just, I find that, you know, I'm better at, for some reason, certain ways of doing things work better for me. So that magic juice, I mean, it's quick, easy, painless. It's been working pretty good for me. I was surprised. I've been doing buffing wheels for a long time. And that works fine. I mean, I was getting good results doing that, but I wasn't getting them as glossy in the end. Uh, now, I could have probably, the, the one thing is I probably could hit it with a little bit of a, uh, what am I trying to say? You know, some sort of a like a, a plastic polish or some some other step at the end. That probably would have, you know that and and I have done that in the past and and it definitely you know worked it helped make it you know polish get it glossy but then you know so you're adding another step but what I found with the magic juice was it you don't even have to take it off the lathe or anything like you're just you're ready to go just polish it up and it quick easy faster than buffing cuz you don't have to mess around you know moving things around and setting up a different machine or setting up the buffing wheels it's already ready in place so this is the blue i i forget what i kind of figured out what grid it goes to maybe not perfect but it's somewhere around 2500 maybe oh wait hold on yeah is that right i don't know it's somewhere in there I'm going to say 2,000. I think it's closer to 2,000. Now, one other thing that I don't really do, because I just, it would be kind of a pain, um, having to fill up a bunch of buckets. But uh, one thing you can do is have different water, you know, for each grit. That may give you slightly better results, possibly. You don't know if any little grit particles or anything like that are kind of coming off into the water. Um, so just just one other thought. I, I just use the same bucket because I usually don't go very high. But I do know some people that have like, they're super serious about that. Um, different bucket for each grit in polishing paper. So if they're using like Zona or Micro Mesh or whatever, they have a different thing. I'm really giving this the, the treatment. Um, I haven't stopped to look at it. I want to try and make sure that we get this as clear as possible. You know what I mean? Okay, so time for some micro mesh. I'm going to dry this off a little bit more. I'm going to go grab some blue paper towels. They're a little bit less abrasive. So that's what I am starting to use with the magic juice. Just the like the shop the Scott shop towels. Um, but you know, when you start getting up to like the really high grits, um, you might even go for like small pieces of like uh like wood by fire was talking about. Um you might mo move up to um you know like a mic uh, microfiber type cloth something even softer basically but you need to watch out you don't want to get a piece of cloth wrapped around the lathe and get hurt you know because cloth and certain things um, are not you know if they get wrapped up you're going to get hurt on the lathe so something that can break away like this is like a, mic uh, a microfiber type material you can get this stuff in like the cleaning department of your like target or whatever and it's probably going to be a little bit softer even than probably quite a bit softer or less less scratchy i think it's pretty scratch resistant compared to even this you know up to you um you probably don't need to do that until you get to like the last two steps but you know okay oh man that looks really good i'm gonna get you oh my god what's going on here and get you guys a shot of this thing. Oh, 
Like I said, kind of subtle. I think a lot of people were kind of like, I don't know. Pretty boring blank, Zach. Ooh. Wow. That white dye just, it's, it's crazy. It's like feathered. Like kind of just sucked it up like it's like electrostatically charged. And you can kind of barely see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see there's a little bit where the, um, it's hard for me to tell if you can see or not. There's like, yeah, you can see it down in there. Um, the, the, the little universal adapter is, is kind of popping through right there, but I used, I, I added some white dye to the epoxy when I glued that in. So it's, it, I mean, you really can't see it. Like I, I didn't even notice it until I remember. It is a different shape pattern than all the feathered resin. But man, this thing's looking pretty good. This thing's cool, I really like this. The interference powder's looking good, woo! Upgrade to the taco. Okay, so let's do some magic juicing. Speaking of juicing, Tatis Jr.'s juicing. He got busted. Pa poor Padres. They pick up all the, all the, you know, Juan Soto. And I don't know if anybody cares about baseball, but it's a pretty big deal. They bought all these players at the trade deadline. And then one of their, this guy that's been playing for them, he's like their star shortstop, has been injured the entire season. Now he's he got busted for, performance enhancing drugs i'm like you're, you're not even playing dude like i don't understand <laughs> padres can't catch a break that's what happens when you hire idiots to be on your baseball team i guess okay so step one um actually i'm gonna need i'm probably gonna need bigger i i i, I ripped up those sheets paper towel things and Kind of small bits. I'm going to go for slightly larger ones. This is a slightly larger blank. That's what I do for pen blanks. Okay, we'll get. We'll, we'll just get started with this. Get my glasses on, you guys can see. All right, so this Magic Juice is just a, pla like a, I don't know if it's plastic polish specifically, but it's a polishing compound, they call it. I'm gonna give it a good, good amount. We're gonna wipe it in first. Now wipe it all over the place. And then we want to be going about 2,000 or so RPMs. I, I switched the lathe back to, oops. You don't need to press hard. Um, just light pressure. Let the polishing compound do the work for you. Give it about 15 seconds or so. And I like to flip my cloth over. Make sure I get all the residue off. Okay. So already it's shiny. I don't know if you can see that, but I mean, it's, that's, that's step one, guys. There's six. <laughs> that's why I like this stuff. It really makes it look good. You make me look good. I need to tighten my arm. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Step two. Oh, I just knocked the whole thing over. Okay, we're okay. Step two. All right, Michael, have a good one.
actually you probably don't need to go 2500 or whatever they recommend on something this large I don't really want to go slow speed but that 2000 to 2500 is actually for pen blanks which are much smaller diameter so just just a thought it's kind of creating a little bit more heat than I think we want you don't really want any heat it's not like a friction polish Sanding time, yeah. Yay. Just in time for sanding, yay. Polishing time is kind of fun, though. That's when you get to start seeing the thing come to life. I don't mind the polishing time so much. Okay, what step are we on? We're on step four now. I need some more. I need to cut up some more rags. Let's stop it and see what's going on. Ooh, wow. That thing is looking good. Okay, step four. Let's see, that was five. Did I skip four? I don't know what's going on. I must have skipped four, huh? Huh. Oops. Oh, that's not the right. That's not the right paper towel. I think I skipped four, guys. Because I only had four. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to step one step back here. Go for some four, then five, then six. Just learning my numbers, you know. Just learning my numbers. Probably doesn't even make any difference, but I want to make sure that this is as good as I can get it. So we're gonna go back to four. Taking a step backwards, but that's okay. Okay, four, now five. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. No complaints here.
Okay, final step six. Uh, we're gonna try, I'm gonna go get a bigger piece, but we're gonna try this microfiber stuff. See how that goes. Stop this for a second. I need to go find scissors that work. And I'm working on the mystery box number two. So that should be coming pretty soon. Not tomorrow. Because I'm not done with it yet. But next Sunday, for sure, it should be done. So be looking for that video. It's another exciting one. I think you guys are going to love it. I'm loving it. Okay, so this stuff will rip, so I'm, I'm not as worried about it. I'm getting caught up on the, on the lathe. Oh my God, that thing looks amazing. Okay, so we're going for number six. Give it a good amount there. Give it a little bit of a wipey. Woo. I'm gonna get you guys, I'm gonna do the, we're gonna do the dramatic end. You guys will be right looking at it. I'll stop it, it'll come to a halt and you're gonna be like, whoa. Cause that's how I feel already, I can see. I mean, you can tell that it's dead clear while it's spinning, you can see everything going on. Here we go, are you ready? One, two, three. Oh my goodness. I mean, that is like dead clear. That looks like glass. Whew. Unfortunately, you guys, I can't really live stream installing it, unfortunately. You'll have to check out the Instagram, but oh man. Ooh, this thing's hot. I tend to, for some reason, all my lathes, bearings get real, man, that is just ridiculous. I don't even want to touch it, it's so perfect. So you can see a little bit of metal on the top where that thing was. I didn't get that covered as well. But in the front, it doesn't really stick out that bad. If I really wanted that to be totally covered up, I would have painted the inside of the hole, like spray painted it or something, rather than just try, you know, epoxy. But you have to be careful. You don't want to add too much dye to a like five minute epoxy if you're gluing stuff in because it'll it can, you know, weaken the bond if you put too much in there. So just enough to cover it up a little bit. I don't really care. 
Ain't hurting nothing. Wow. Whew. That is ridiculous, guys. What do you think of that? I know the little tendrils. I mean, I had no... I mean, I wasn't even trying to do anything like that. I was trying to kind of have it be flat. And that's just interesting. Um, one thing, so a couple things happened. So I poured it. Uh, you know what's weird? I totally lost the mold for, <laughs> that I that Turner's Warehouse sent me for the um, pepper grinder. I have no clue where... I have no clue where they where they where that went but anyway i have another three inch mold um so we poured it on its side we poured the white down in first and so it was kind of sitting at the bottom and then i poured you know very carefully poured the clear on top and so obviously we moved it up right but i didn't dump anything on the top like i was trying to have it all just kind of settle and be be still now i don't know exactly when this tendril thing happened but the other thing that we did that I want to make sure you guys know. I don't want you to go and be like, well, Zach said that tendrils happen if you pour it on its side. The other, the other thing that we did was we used the syringe to add the um, the little swirls. And I don't know if, I don't think that that, because it, it's so like all of that white kind of came up. So I don't really think, but we, we were adding a little bit of, you know, something. We were moving stuff around a little bit with the syringe. So there are a couple of things going on. Um, I don't know that these little tendrils, I, I mean, I, I'm just going to be honest. I, I think they would be very difficult to, you know, get exactly that effect again, um, possibly. Um, but in one other thing that I also want to mention with that interference powder, I really think that if I would have done black instead of white on the bottom, I think that would have been a lot better. I think that blue would really pop. Um, at night, this might really pop as well. I'm, I don't know exactly, um, but it's, man, whoa, whoa. Uh, I have never gone through a set of magic juice. Now, I don't make, I don't turn thousands of pens, you know, so I don't know how far it'll go, but that's just like their standard size set, like I think one ounce bottles. And I mean, if, if all you're doing is like pens, I mean, this stuff's going to last forever, I think. Let's say, yeah, these are one ounce. And I mean, I don't know, you know, eventually I'll have to replace this, but I still have a, quite a bit left in the one ounce bottles. They also have a, tw uh, they have like a sample size that's like maybe half this size. I don't know if they have that at Turner's Warehouse. Let's see. Oh yeah, they do. So they have a 10 milliliter sample set. If you wanna try, I mean, I'm telling you. So 10 milliliters, how many milliliters is this? So these are 30, so it's a third of this size, um, is $12 for the whole set, right? So, I mean, you can try it out and you're gonna bust out a lot of pens with even just the 10 milliliter set. Um, so you can try it for 12 bucks and if you like it, then you can get the one ounce set. You know, this is 30 bucks. Um, but they also, if you're like dead set on it, they have a two ounce set that appears to be sold out right now, but you can have them email you when it's back and that's 55 bucks. But this stuff, I mean, you know, the, so the next time, I don't know, I might go for the two ounce cause I mean, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to use this stuff. It works good. So, um, but that's at Turner's warehouse. If you want to pick it up, I have a link down in the description below. Um, but I'll, I'll give you guys, I'll drop a link in the chat if anybody wants to check it out. Uh, one second here. Oops, that's not that. Uh, there we go. There we go. There's a link to the magic juice. Let's see here. So, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I don't mind sanding too bad if... If I only have to do a few, like, you know, because I started at, like, 240, but if you got to start at, like, 80 grit or 100, like, you're just like, oh, my gosh. Roids help in recovery. <laughs> I guess. All he did was fall off a motorcycle, though, so. Okay, so let's see here. Any other? Whoa, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Whoa. I know. 
yeah, I'll let you know about the interference powder at night. Um, and I'll give you guys, you know, obviously I'll give you um, updates. Um, we'll, we'll probably do like a video where I'm, you know, like a wrap up or something like that. Um, I might, I'll probably do a reel of installing this as well in my truck. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. I might, I might kind of put together like a, a stylized reel with a few different clips possibly. I don't know. I, I'm thinking about maybe pulling stuff out of the, out of this, um, oh, for goodness sakes. Michael Barr is gone. I'm going to report. I'm going to hide. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. There's always somebody, and they always tend to show up at the end of the stream. At least I was watching this <laughs> this time. Um, anyway, so I was thinking about pulling that out, but the problem is the, the video file for this is two hours long, and like I just don't really want to have to convert all that stuff. So what I'll probably do is... is uh, probably shoot a video of just kind of showing this thing and then I'll, I'll, I'll also get some a clip of like installing it so be looking for that on reels and probably sh I'll do it on YouTube shorts as well so you can kind of see it my truck's disgusting so don't look at the truck just look at the the gear shift knob um, but anyway <laughs> it really is the best dating site <laughs> is or is it really I don't know I don't know probably I mean that's why I wanted to get rid of it because I don't want you guys to know you know I, I, I'm sponsored by the other the other not, you know, the, the second best dating site. That's my sponsor. So, anyway, guys, I think that's about it. Anybody got any questions before we wrap things up? That was a fun one. So, you know, I hope that you guys, um, you know, if, if, you, if you have a replaceable gear shift knob in your car, it's not that difficult. Now, like I said, the, the, I think the drawback to these things is... The hardware kit stuff is kind of expensive. It's just, it's kind of silly. You're paying like 15 bucks for that universal nut thing that goes in, that you glue in. And then I don't even know how much. I have links to, to where you get the hardware in the, the, um, in the description there. I think it's like 30 bucks for the pack of like adapter things, which just kind of sucks. You know, like, it's really... Oh, you can buy them one at a time now. I stand corrected. I bought a whole pack. They didn't have these before. Not bad. Okay, so the universal thing that you put into the... You know, that, that goes in... I don't want to touch this thing. I guess I may as well. I don't want to do it. I don't want to touch it too much before I get that, that real video done. I'm going to put gloves on. So just in case anybody, if you didn't see what how this thing works... So inside here, this is like this universal kind of like nut adapter thing. And that, you know, that's what this mandrel that fits that. But then there's also, you use a little adapter nut thing. And this, the inside thread fits your, and you'll have to figure out what your gear shift, shifter thing, what the thread is on there. They have like all kinds of different sizes in, in standard and metric. Um, so the inside thread is what fits onto your gear shift, you know, rod. And then the outside diameter of all these things, that's what fits this, right? So that's how these things work. Um, the universal is like 15 bucks um, for, for the thing that goes in the actual knob itself that you glue in. Um, and then it looks like you can pick up just the, the nut thing, your adapter for your car, and they're like 10 bucks. So that's not too bad. Um, you can pick up a whole adapter set, an eight piece set for, I guess, 25. So I don't know, $10 for one thing is kind of a rip off. All this stuff is kind of a rip off, but, um, I, I talked to, so this, and again, this is not, um, it's not stainless bottle stoppers. Stainless bottle stoppers sells the mandrel. Um, they don't do the nuts and, and, you know, the reason that these things cost so much, cause I was talking to Dan over at stainless and I'm like, dude, you should make the nuts. And he's like, you know how much it costs to make one, you know, like with that low of amount that you're making, he's like, it's just not even worth it for us. So it, it is tough. Um, you know, that's, that's the problem with it, but 25 bucks for the hardware. That's not that bad. Um, it's better than, you know, um, what was that 25 plus um plus 15 what was that 50 bucks 25 35 40 40 
Is that 50? I can't do math. Ha! Why are you making me do math on the fly? 25 plus 15. That's $40. So 40 compared to 25, not so bad, but I'm excited about this. I can't wait to put this in my truck and use it. Tractor knobs, that's nice, yeah. Oh, it's okay, Donnie, you can watch the replay, no problem. Uh, I think the magic juice is gonna be fine. Magic juice is not a finish. That's just gonna polish it up. So. I'm just, I don't want to get a fingerprint on it before I shoot the video. I want it to be as perfect as possible. That's why I was talking about that. Um, but I think the magic juice, I don't know that it's not really going to hold up to anything. But so again, um, for anybody that's kind of just joined and doesn't know what's going on, um, this is made with Alumalite Clear Slow, uh, which is a urethane resin that has like pretty much no UV in inhibitors in it. And so the experiment is going to be, um, we're going to put this in my truck and see how quickly it yellows because I'm pretty sure this one's going to yellow. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but we did an experiment with Amazing Clearcast Plus, which has like really high UV inhib inhibitors, and it didn't even yellow, and it's been in my truck for a year. Uh, so it'll be a little bit of a comparison. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm really interested to see how these things kind of compare to each other, how, how that, the yellowing factor works. Um, if this doesn't yellow, I'm going to be like, ugh, I don't know, because <laughs> I got stuff that's that's made with Alumalite Clear Slow in my shop. It's never seen UV light that's yellow. I mean, resin's yellow over time eventually, but it'll be kind of interesting to see how this goes. But I am super stoked. This thing, I, th I think I did like, I think this is like the perfect size. I think this is going to be really nice. Um, and if it's a little bit too big, if I want to make it smaller... Um, all I got to do is just chuck it back up on the lathe and do a lot of, you know, sanding and polishing again. But, you know, I can I can turn it down a little bit further um, if it's a little bit too big. So I'm pretty excited about it. Are they knurled? Yeah, they are knurled on the, the universals knurled on the outside that you glue in. Um, I don't have one of those to show you because they're it's glued in right now. Um, and unfortunately, I couldn't show you the video either. But there's uh, there's knurling on the outside of the universal one. The other ones are just threaded. And so, you know, I mean, you could probably, I don't know, so you could probably make your own, um, you know, if you wanted to, if, you, if you're able to do, you know, tapping and stuff. But, I mean, most, like, my dad's a machinist, and I'm not even going to mess around with that stuff. Yeah, I do have fluorescent lights. There are, I mean, there's UV light that can kind of, hit stuff but i'm just saying like it hasn't even been like exposed to direct uv light you know so it's pretty crazy yeah there's i mean there's particles bouncing around getting us all over the place these uv rays so anyway guys so next week we're going to be doing um we got a new 3d model print thing that we're going to be doing that on the live stream and then i just want to warn you guys so not not next week but the week after that i'm going to be out of town so um, no streams that week, but next week we're doing some 3D print models, so that's going to be fun. It's going to be a cool one. I can't wait to do it. And yeah, you can tap them. I know. Um, you should make some of these little these little um, kits for for people. That would be cool. It's probably a lot of work though. Um, so anyway, I think that's about it. So thank you guys all for joining the fun today. For checking this out, be looking on Instagram and and on YouTube for the shorts. Um, I'll, I'll get a, a shot of, you know, the finished product and then just, you know, screwing it down in, into the truck and then it'll be kind of cool. You'll be able to see it. So I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. We'll be back on Wednesday at 3 PM Pacific time doing those 3d print, uh, model castings and it should be pretty fun. So anyway, guys have a great night and I will see you guys on the next stream.